So did you know that uh, there is a song from the 80s that's about the Loch Ness Monster? Yeah, there is. Yeah, by the police. Synchronicity 2. They sing about it. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It's something that never really occurred to me, really. Uh, you know, until maybe a, a year or so ago. I, I'll have to listen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, folks, that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about the Loch Ness Monster as well as other lake monsters uh, coming up on Black Lotus. Conspiracy theories, the paranormal, UFOs, aliens, and all things strange and unusual. This is Black Lotus. So let's talk about... Uh, Loch Ness, first of all, because Loch Ness, the Nessie, the Loch Ness monster, is the granddaddy of them all, or the, grand, the knows. grand mammy, as the case may be. <laughs> uh, uh, Nessie, his reports of Nessie have been around for geez, ever. I mean, I, th I, th I think the first report was from St. Columbia, and that was in uh, I, I, I read uh, 565 AD, and uh, apparently. Uh, in his journal, he wrote that he saw this thing and it was attacking, it was biting somebody and it was about to bite somebody else. And he used the power of the Lord or whatever it is. And he, and he said, get back, get back or go back. And it obeyed. Yeah. So, Interesting. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that I mean, that was forever ago, you know, I mean, so uh, I, th I think a lot of people think that the whole Loch Ness monster thing came about with the photo that you're looking at here behind us, you know, with, with that, uh, uh, famous photo. Um, and when, when was that photo taken? Now? This was taken in, um, 1960, I believe. Yeah. Sorry. I want to say it was back in the sixties, but in the thirties, when they were building the road around Loch Ness, there was a lot of reports of Loch Ness from mm -hmm. the construction workers. Right. Right. So it's not like, you know, this, this picture is like, way ahead of when actually Loch Ness was known about. Uh -huh. Right, right. And, you know, I mean, there's been a lot of fake sightings about the thing, you know, I mean, things that are obvious hoaxes, you know, and even this picture uh, was later proven to be a hoax. 1934. 34 was it? 34, oh, okay. excuse me. But yeah, uh, th this picture in itself, uh, uh, the guy finally admitted that it was actually a, a little submarine that he had crafted. Right. It was him and some friends. Um, it was actually a sculptor that actually did the sculpting of it. Okay. They did it on a submarine in 1934. And the guy who did it, uh, uh, Wilson, um, is actually a surgeon. Right, that's he was a doctor, called, yeah. That's why they call it the surgeon picture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Kenneth Wilson, R. Kenneth Wilson. Um, but uh, the other one was Ian with Weatherall and uh, Maurice Chambers, who was an insurance agency. So a sculptor, a doctor, and an insurance. Sounds like a bad joke. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're the ones who did this. Um, and what's funny is while they were doing this, the uh, water um, commission came up and uh, the water bailiff came in. Okay. And while they were filming this, and they took and pushed the down with his foot. So they're saying that the submarine they did is still somewhere at the bottom of Loch Ness. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, that it wasn't really from, big, was it? it was, no, it was, it, was, small. it was a very small. It, they, yeah. you know, it was kid-sized submarine. Yeah. And if, if you look at the wake around the thing, you can tell that it's kind of small, actually. If you, if you, look, if you look at the waves around it and all that, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't look natural, you know? I mean, the, the, the waves wouldn't necessarily be that large, I don't think, you know? Well, it could have if it had just popped up out of maybe. the water, maybe. But even, I don't but, know. E but even the waves in the background, I, I, I just don't really, yeah. Um, but the, one of the reasons we're doing this show today uh, is because of the fact that um, uh, there have been, uh, there's, there was a new sighting. Right. And the photo of it is pretty remarkable, actually. Look at this. Um, now, I was telling Ralph, the head of the creature kind of looks like a seal. Almost. But then, uh, first of all, what's a seal doing in Loch Ness? First of all, you know, I mean, and secondly, what about the rest of the, 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 the body? I mean, it, 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 it wouldn't be other seals flipping around over there, you know? Right. So I, I don't know. It's really interesting. And it, it's all, it, they would almost have to be synchronized, like synchronized swimmers to be making something that looks that long. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, this is one of the best pictures I've seen oh, yeah. come to light. And it says taken by, uh, I, I believe, a little girl. Was it? Yeah, a little girl uh, with a cell phone. Okay, okay, okay. Um, hey, folks, before we go on, I want to make an announcement here. Uh, Ralph and I are starting to do something new on... Uh, 
uh, Black Lotus. And what it's going to be is the tinfoil hat question of the week. And uh, that's going to be coming up here pretty soon to, uh, on, on this show. And if you have any questions for us, and when I say questions, I mean anything at all. Uh, uh, we will not only answer it, but we'll link your question back to a conspiracy theory. So any question at all, I mean, challenge I, us. Yeah, challenge us. If 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 you want to know uh, uh, about hot dogs, ask us a question about hot dogs. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you ask. We will be able to link it back to a conspiracy. I guarantee it. So anyway, that's going to be coming up here pretty soon on this show. Um, but uh, there is something else about Loch Ness. Uh, that's recent and I want to say I saw that it was in June a scientist uh, by the name of Dr. Neil Gemmel uh, has decided he's going to take water samples and test the DNA of the water and evidently he's going to be he'll be able to uh, 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 differentiate all the species in that that are in the water everything from weeds in the water to uh, 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 reptiles to uh, fish to everything. I don't know how he's going to do this. My God. I mean, there's got to be thousands of species in there. Be like finding a needle in a haystack? Yeah, yeah my God. But um, I, I, don't, I know he was planning on doing it, and he made the announcement about it back in June, but I couldn't find any follow-up on it yet. Um, I'm sure that would take a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my God, you know. Um, I mean, first, you'd have to separate them all, and then you'd have to do, start determining which ones are what. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, what a project! But uh, there was one that you said that they, uh, they did uh, in 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 Norway, wasn't it? Right. It was in. Uh, I'm not even going to pronounce the word. It's in this long word in Norway, <laughs> um, but they call it Selma. Yeah. Now, Selma is. They've had hundreds of years back of sightings of this thing, and this is a supposed picture of it now. This almost looks like bad CGI in a movie. Oh man, it's 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 so blurry. I, I, again, that's one of the things that drives me nuts about when people take pictures of these anomalies. You know, they're either, either the video is really shaky or the pictures are blurry. Everybody's got cell phones, man. I mean, and with with you know high pixelization, so I don't understand why they all have to be so blurry. I mean, unless unless they are. I don't actually know that last one was pretty darn. That one clear. was good. That one was really good. But again, that was probably one of the best ones I've seen. You I know? think ever, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is supposedly Selma. I guess there's like over 500 encounters of this thing. Um, they actually took a team, the Global Underwater Search Team, uh, went under a major expedition and went into the waters and they built this trap and release cage to try to catch Selma. Okay. Now they didn't catch Selma, but they got some DNA off of the cage and the DNA tested that there is saying that they are just definitely something reptilian living in that lake. Really? Really? That they don't know about. So huh. that's that's a little interesting there. I'd like to know now more they know about it's, this. They know it's reptilian, but is, is it a species that they, that they know of? It doesn't, it doesn't clarify that. Really? But, really? But also in Norway, I don't know what reptilians would live in that lake. I, I, that would be interesting to look yeah, into. Yeah, especially as cold as it gets. Right, you know? exactly. So, yeah. That's one of the things about the, you know, going into this again, it was so many rabbit holes to go down. <coughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <clears throat> so, but I thought that was interesting that, that they actually are now at least claiming that there is something in the water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but anyway, going, going from the best known lake monster nessie to one of the lesser known ones um and what i'm talking about here is uh uh the uh, monster that supposedly haunts uh lake erie here in the united states and uh that monster is known as bessie oh. not nessie but bessie original <laughs> yeah and uh it's been it's had reports uh of, the, of this we've been getting reports about this uh since the uh, late 18th century and uh, it's but it, supposedly it's black and it's like 35 feet long and it's more snake-like than say like Nessie is. Nessie, oh. Nessie. A lot of people think that Nessie is, is uh, possibly a plesiosaur. Right. Um, other people think, well, it may, it may have started out as a plesiosaur, but it's evolved into something else. And uh, but this thing is more like a snake, and from the reports. And like I said, it's black and it's 35 feet long. Um, it's got like a snake-like head. Um, and, uh, but a lot of people think that it could actually just be a lake sturgeon. 
Hmm. And I think that that is possibly the case with a, with a lot of these uh, 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 sightings. Uh, sightings. Either a lake sturgeon or, you know, an oversized eel. Now, so, a lot of things, oversized eels, there's definitely, you know, we'll have a video coming up later that, that looks like what it looks like. Right, that was in, in, in the ocean, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah that yeah, was pretty I, I agree with I agree with you that a lot of them can be explained like that. And there's even one explanation for, I believe it's a uh, Loch Ness monster, that it's elephants with their trunk up. That they're walking through the water and it's elephants with the trunk up because the right. surface comes and lets them well, drink off of that. Possibly. Uh, but yeah, anyway, this is a picture of uh, Bessie. And again, it's very blurry. This is an old picture. Uh, but again, uh, uh, the people think it very well could just be a sturgeon because even, even this one here, um, you can kind of see a fin on top, like a dorsal. Uh, so I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I, again, you can't tell much from the picture, but then again, who knows? Uh, yeah, it's but, pretty blurry. Yeah. But anyway, tell me about Bear Lake. Well, Bear Lake remind me, made me think of it kind of the same description of it. It's supposedly like a long serpent thing, but this has legs that are like up to 18 inches long. Okay. And it mean, this thing actually goes and walks around the shoreline, not just swimming. Uh -huh. um, it's actually supposedly about 50 feet long. And it's like has an undulating body and it like pulses mm -hmm. and that uh, it's a light cream color. So well, that's take a, take, different. Let's take a look at this. Um, so this is what we're talking about here. And, and I've seen this picture before and it's, it is awfully long. I mean, and I mean, a lot of people think that people mistake these things for logs. This thing is quite obviously not a log. Right. Um, that, that is definitely something in the water. And it's really, really long. Now, some people say it could be a mass of seaweed that's trailing along. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It I, seems I, pretty solid yeah, for seaweed. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, it's, if it was seaweed, I would think there would be little strings coming out some places or something. Yeah, yeah. I, and, I don't and, and, know. And it, yeah, and it's very smooth. Looking. And everybody is describing this thing with the head of a cow, kind of like crocodile or a wal walrus minus the tusks. Okay. And it does have that kind of look to a, it. A bit, yeah, yeah. It's got yeah. that, it's very got a very massive head. But, um, yeah, there's been numerous, numerous sightings on this one. I just thought it was an interesting, one of the best pictures, again, that I've seen. Usually it's blurry. Mm -hmm. This is pretty clear. I mean, unfortunately, the water is blurring it. Not the, It's not a blurry right, picture. Right, 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 right. But um, but then uh, uh, there's the uh, I'm gonna mispronounce the logger <laughs> logger float worm, and that's that's out of uh, where is that Ralph? Logger float Iceland. Is it Iceland? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And uh, we found a, a a a video of this, um, and it's pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know what it is, uh, but it's uh, definitely something there. Now again. You could say maybe it's seaweed that is, is all, or, you know, weeds that are all attached and just floating. I don't think so. It looks like it's undulating. It's, it right. looks like it's actually moving. And right there, look at that. You can actually see a head. Yeah, and it's it's following itself. Now, some people are saying it's because the ice is causing it to follow that path, but I have to agree. It's more like a snake movement than anything i've seen yeah i don't know i don't know it's 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 very strange this was but, since 19 or excuse me 1345 they've been seeing this really thing. really and, you know and that's another thing too is a lot of these sightings uh i don't think a lot of people realize how old these legends are i mean like here in america we have uh, uh several different uh sea monsters uh, uh and uh, they actually date back to the native american peoples and their right. and their and their and their legends about it so yeah this one, the this uh, logger float has had some reputable sighting people too. So I mean, the the National Forest Service cited it in 1963. The head of it. Mm -hmm. um, there's been teachers and all the students of a school saw this thing. Um, that was in '83, I believe. Or eight, excuse me, '98. In '83, there were some people that were laying um, telephone wire. Okay. Now they were measuring for depth. And they kept measuring a shifting mass and they couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. Well, they decided to lay, lay the line over this mass. Now, this line is made so that it won't kink up or get wound up and stuff. Okay. Because, you know, it's for telephone and stuff. Well, they laid it down and they could feel it was not right. They pulled it up and it was broken in 22 places. Wow. Really? Right. Huh. 
So they're saying that they, they think that they laid it across the teeth, maybe, or across the belly or the body of this monster, and mm -hmm. it wrecked the heck out of it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's some weird things happening in that lake. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you can see that thing. I wouldn't want to be in that lake near that thing. Oh, good Lord, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I mean, but there are so many uh, hoaxes out there with, with not only Loch Ness, but a lot of these things. I mean, and, and, and they're claimed hoaxes. You know, I mean, people have come out, yeah, we were just kidding, you know, and, and, but there have been some pictures like, like, uh, you know, I don't remember who the guy was, but, uh, uh, there was a scientific ex uh, expedition into, uh, Loch Ness. Now you have to understand that Loch Ness is very, uh, uh it's very deep and it's very dark. You know, there's a lot of peat moss. And, yeah. like that. and so this guy got photos of what he thought was, uh, the fin of a plesiosaur. But then he came out later and said, no, eh, just kidding. You know, that drives me nuts when people do that. Why? 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 You know, I mean, are you for a publicity hat? But is there fortune to be had? You know, I think it's just for, for publicity. It's 15 for, minutes of fame. Yeah. This is sad. Sad. But anyway, uh, but as we were saying earlier, you know, a lot of these pictures are, are, are fuzzy or, or when you get video footage, a lot of it's shaky and all that stuff. And uh, there was a uh, sighting off of Myrtle Beach. Um, and now, now this is in, in a lake, but it's, but it's in the water. And it, it attra attracted the attention of a lot of people. A lot of people right. saw this. Even the police were involved with this thing. But yeah, t take a look at this video. Um, you can see there in, in, in the ocean in the background, there, there's something swimming there. Now, it's hard to tell what it is, but later on in the video, you, uh, there's there's a close up of it, and it looks like an oversized eel. I mean, just a huge eel. It's it's enormous. First of all, I mean, that's pretty far out there, and look how big it is. Right. And they'll show it close up. You'll see how long this thing actually is. But again, there's people there, and they're obviously looking at it. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to tell what it is. Um, is it a sea serpent? What, what is it exactly? But now here, they're getting a little closer here. You can see a little clearer, more, a little more clear uh, that it is some sort of, it looks like a snake or an eel or something like that. I don't, I don't know what the hell Well, it and is. It's, it looks like it's obviously moving. It doesn't look like it's free floating. Yeah, it right. It looks like it's right. swimming. Mm -hmm. no, you're see, kind of against now, the tide. Look at all the people here. It's not yeah. like there's one or two people watching it. Right. And you can see they're all facing towards that direction. Right. So it's obviously there is something in the water. Yeah. And and like I said, I mean, it, 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 it even, you know, it even attracted the attention of the police. You know, the police were there on the beach. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you can tell that it's not something free floating, like you said. And the reason being is, is because it's not only just looks like it's undulating and swimming but it was going against the tide do you have this clip of it later on where it's actually next to the beach no i didn't get that oh okay yeah later on in the it actually comes by the beach and it's swimming in this direction instead of that direction oh is that right against really? the tide totally yeah. yeah yeah so i mean it couldn't be something that's free floating if that was the case it would have washed up on the beach you know but no this is totally against the uh, the, the tide but um anyway as promised it's time for the, the tinfoil hat, hat. Question of the week. Yay! So for our very first question, uh, question of the week, the tinfoil hat question of the week, uh, we got a question from Terry. And Terry asks, why do we still use daylight savings time? Well, the first thing I want to say is there's no S in daylight saving time. Yep. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, a lot of, and and I, I just found that out. I, I, I always assumed that it was daylight savings time. Yeah, we yeah. say it wrong. Yeah, apparently so. Yeah, that or it's a Mandela effect and it's changed. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're coming out of daylight saving time uh, uh, coming up in November on, right. on the 4th. Uh, but we looked into this and we found that there are, a, we kind of went down a rabbit hole about this. And like, like we said, we're going to link this to a conspiracy theory. And when we looked it up, we actually found that it is certainly part of a conspiracy theory. And, but let me tell you a little bit about daylight saving time and how it affects us. Uh, the first thing I found was that, uh, well, first of all, night owls tend to have a harder time adjusting uh, than people who are, you know, morning birds, you know. Uh, but it does affect everyone uh, and their sleep habits. 
Um, and I found out that there is when 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 for the first week after we go into daylight saving time, uh, there is a spike in heart attacks. Ooh, there's a conspiracy theory. Yeah, yeah. And then lost some people. Yeah. And then at the end of it, once it ends uh, for the first week after that, there's like a slight dip in uh, heart attacks. So that, uh, that's kind of well, also maybe it evens itself out. It, I, I think it makes sense, though, because if it, it's affecting sleep, people's sleeping habits and, you know, they're not feeling right. I, I could see how that would lead to heart attacks, you know, um, but uh, the interesting I, I the, a lot of people think that daylight saving time was incorporated back when Benjamin Franklin uh, wrote a paper and he published it and it was called an economical project for diminishing the cost of light. And the reason he wrote that was because he uh, noticed that people were burning more candles at nighttime and then sleeping past dawn. But it was published, but nothing ever actually came to be about it. You know, it was this project. He he, he suggested doing this, and, right. but it was never instated. And then a lot of people think that it was the farmers. Right. Who? But yeah. you said that the farmers were actually against it. Yeah, the farmers were against it because, if you think about it, it makes sense. It didn't make any difference to them what time it was. When the wheat is wet in the morning from the morning dew, they can't cut it. They have right. to wait for the dew to dry before they can actually harvest the wheat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it didn't matter what time the clock said. So what did it matter to them? Yeah. They yeah. were against it. It's like, just leave it the same. We go out and start working when we can. Yeah. Yeah. No. So. Weird. I, but uh, evidently, it didn't start until, when was it? It was a... Now, now... Uh, Franklin's paper was published back in 1784. Right, and then in 1905, it was William Wellett that actually invented daylight saving Right, time. and it was passed into law first here in the United States uh, uh, during World War I. Um, and the reason for that was so that they could uh, 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 conserve fuel, you know. Yeah, energy conserv costs. conservation. Yeah, because, I mean, all the money was being thwarted to the war you know so the war effort so but anyway so yeah so that's that's when it started it actually started back in the uh, during the world war one but um so how is this actually cons a conspiracy theory well let me let me say one more thing here um uh like i said there's there's a spike in heart attacks and uh there is also uh evidently more traffic accidents as we enter dst and again it's because people are groggy you know they're not paying attention to the road, you know? I mean, people don't pay attention to the road anyway, but I mean, you know, so can you imagine if they're sleepy on top of it? Um, well, anyway, so how this goes into a conspiracy theory is that uh, when the days are longer, uh, people tend to spend more money, you know, or rather when the days seem to be longer, they tend to spend more money and they, they, they spend it on everything, everything from tourism to recreation, to shopping, to restaurants. And if you think about it, it may, that makes sense, you know? So it starts getting dark out. You think the day is over, so you go and stop spending money. Uh -huh. So they're going to try to make it stay light as late as possible. Yeah. And more money Greed. being spent, more money being spent means more money for the top 1%, which means what? More money for the Illuminati. So, and I think it also keeps us enslaved to our jobs because if we're spending more money, you know, it keeps us enslaved. Well, I have to go to work. I have to do this. I have to do that. And so, you know, I mean, I think that's what the Illuminati wants. They want us all to be <clears throat> ens enslaved to our jobs, you know, so we'll be compliant, you know. Definitely. So anyway, so Terry, there's your answer. <laughs> so the last thing we're going to talk about today is we're going to be talking about a sighting uh, that happened at, uh, what is the name of this lake? I always forget that. Uh, 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 lake. Oh. O o Okanagan Dang Lake. Yeah. Okan I was just trying to figure out how to say it. <laughs> o o Okanagan Lake, and that's in British Columbia, Canada. And uh, the monster that supposedly dwells there is called Ogopogo. And again, there's been, I mean, Ogopogo goes way, way back. Right. But there haven't been many sightings lately of it uh, until just recently. Um, so we want to take, we want to show you. Um, some footage that a uh, guy and his family took while they were out having a picnic uh, on the shore of uh, uh, Okanagan. 
So take a look at this. And again, this is one of those videos where it's not so much that it's shaking, but he didn't see, he, he said that he didn't really see, he didn't know what he was looking at. And so he didn't know if he was getting it on film or not. Yeah, he said it, it also the way the sun was uh, off of his cell phone, which can't we all tell, know how that goes. Yeah. It was very hard to see what he was trying to get. And that we, makes sense, especially we're seeing that. where they're at. And you can see the sun is reflecting. I don't know if I'm behind. getting it, though, because yeah. I can't see it. Um, and again, great. it's this is one of those videos where, I mean, you see it for a split second, and then it's gone. And you see, see it for a split second. And, and he, had he been able to really see what he was, I think he would have been able to focus in on it. But here, I mean, you see the rocks more than you see That thing was Ogopogo. probably 40 feet long. Yeah, kind of interesting. But again, I mean, there haven't been uh, I think it was. many sightings of Ogopogo lately. Uh, but Do you have that still of it? No. Oh. Well... No. <laughs> oh well there's a really good still if you if you look this up there's a really good still of it that's you can actually see what it looks like and it, it's okay. very strange looking huh. huh very strange looking um but yeah they this this monster has been around forever it the natives called it nahitiki okay I'm not, I mean, I'm sure I'm not saying anywhere near close, right? <laughs> but so it's been around, and they used to actually sacrifice animals to the lake to satisfy this monster. Really? In the lake, yes. Mm. So I thought that was really, really interesting. Do, do, now, it's being described as a snake. Now, does it have, do, do, do they speculate that it has feet? Does it get out of the water like, like Loch Ness reports? There's been no reports of it out of the water. Really? No, no, not at all. There is a, another video of it um, where some family was looking at it, and it just looks like a bunch of bumps and stuff, so it was mm -hmm. not a very good one. But this one, like I said, if you look at the actual still image of it, it's amazing. It's pretty crisp crisp. also. Really? You can actually see what it is. Okay, okay. So. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Um, are there any other reports you wanted to talk about? Uh, well, you know, I will just, I won't go into a lot of detail on my reports. There was one uh, in Sweden that I found interesting because it's like the other ones, you know, snake, blah, 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 blah. Um, but the legend has it that in 1635, two witches made a magic potion that resulted in the creation of this vicious lake monster. And that's what, le what lurks in that monster. In, oh, okay. Or in that lake. And I thought that was kind of a, a different take on it because, you know, most of it's Native American, Native uh, people that are talking about this stuff. Mm -hmm. But this was actually witches that they were going to have sure. that made the, this lake monster. Huh. But this is a phenomenon that's all, all over the world. I mean, we know Champ and stuff. But right. there's like in uh, Lake Como in Italy, there's La Rosso Raro. Okay. <laughs> that's near Milan. Uh, they've had sightings as early as 2003. There's a Little Nahal in uh, Argentina. And uh, that one only comes out during the summer, though, which is interesting. Okay. They only see that in the summer. They've actually built observation decks around the lake so you can look for this monster. Really? Really? So, you know, a lot of these places have become tourist traps. There is one in Turkey where there's been over a thousand sightings of it recently. Oh, is that right? So, you know, it's from 95 up. So it's more of a recent one, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but there's been a ton of sightings. So why is it that all over the world, some they everybody has one of these type of monsters? Yeah, you you mentioned Lake Como, and I'm I, I would be interested because you know who lives on Lake Como is uh, George Clooney, and I'd like to know whether or not he's ever seen it. Hmm, be interesting uh, to look up too. Huh. So you can go down so many rabbit holes on these uh, oh, topics. Man. I'm telling you, yeah, it's <laughs> easy to get lost. But yeah, um, but yeah, uh, you you mentioned that there was over a thousand sightings uh, recently, and 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 uh, I know last year, two thousand seventeen, was like a banner year for uh, uh, sightings uh, at Loch Ness, and there were like eleven sightings uh, that year, which is quite a bit. I mean, usually you'll catch like one, maybe two, right? But in two thousand seventeen, there was just a ton of them. And one of the reasons for that was because uh, I want to say it was the Kodak company. Um, or it was some millionaire. I can't, I can't recall. But what he did is he uh, did a Nessie festival and he handed out a whole bunch of uh, uh, small disposable cameras and he asked people to catch Nessie. You know? Interesting. And so, so all these people were out there, you know, and so that, that's probably why. Uh, but yeah.
Uh, but yeah, it's not a small lake. Yeah, no, it's huge. It's huge and it's deep, you know. And so, what Nessie could be is anybody's guess. I mean, like it, like I said, I mean, there's theories that it's it's a plesiosaur, that it's 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 nothing more than logs or whatever it is. But I don't know, man. I I I I don't necessarily believe in the Loch Ness monster necessarily. I don't necessarily believe in Nessie, but I, there have been there's been photos and 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 video footage that's just way too compelling to write the whole thing off. Oh, yeah. And um, some of these places have to have something real in them. Right, right. Uh, what was the name of the one that one with the snake-like thing that we were looking at? Oh, the flu. Uh, the oh my god, that's <laughs> logger, logger float worm. Thank you. I was I like mean, the float a logger. I was. Gonna yeah, say. I mean, and and that's just it's it's just it's. It, it looks too real, you know. And obviously, it's 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 not photoshopped. I mean, it's not a v edited video. It's something in the water. It's definitely something. Uh, now, whether or not it's a sturgeon or, like I said, an oversized eel, who knows? Or a submarine. Or a submarine. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and that one that we saw at Myrtle Beach with this thing swimming against yeah. the tide. I mean, that's again, that's one. Look up and watch the whole video. It's about a ten minute video, but at the end, they show it up close and personal, and it's not, it's like nothing you've ever seen. Yeah, 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 most definitely. But uh, anyway, what do you say we get out of here for that? Sounds day? good. All right. Uh, so anyway, we are going to be back, uh, and I'm, I never recall what we're doing next. We're we've, doing we've got a whole internet schedule. Internet monsters. Oh, internet monsters. That's what it was. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's Charlie, right. Charlie, Mojo, and of course or Momo, Momo, excuse Slenderman. me, of course Slenderman. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we're doing that one on uh, on Tuesday. So uh, anyway, until next time, keep thinking and question everything. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell so you can get a reminder every time we upload a new episode.